Ever since, the dream game has been getting better and better, and the city's looking incredible, and the roads are looking incredible, so many people have asked for a realistic roads tutorial. So, here we go. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, this is my dream game. It's gonna be a motorcycle stunting game, and as you can see, it has some pretty crazy roads, whether that's highways, underpasses, even straight roads in the city. All of this stuff will be possible for literally anybody who watches today's video. Now, real quick, I do want to note that the bigger you make your starting road pack, the more diverse and better your roads are going to be. For example, this map that is just over 12 base plates big has a road pack that looks like this. A ton of different pieces and options to choose from later on when you're making a road. Anyways, we'll start in a completely blank space so you can see exactly what's going on. The first thing that you're going to need to do is build a road segment. This could be as short or as long as you want. I would keep in mind for any longer section that you do end up making, which would be a duplicate of a bunch of these parts, go ahead and delete them and just stretch your part out. That's gonna help you later with your optimization. Here is our road piece or road parts. This is our model. And now we're gonna use a plugin called Archimedes. It is a free plugin right here and I will have it linked down below in the description so everybody can make awesome roads. Another huge question I got or that I had in fact at the beginning do you make the roads or the terrain first? I would say it doesn't overly matter if you have a pretty flat map, but getting road and terrain to like link up perfectly is kind of hard. And to change that, I would edit your base model just a little bit and I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. Let's go ahead and grab this duplicate it and we'll make it green just so we can tell the difference scale it out so it takes up the whole road and then using archimedes we're gonna go ahead and generate this side click on this swap sides flip axis and render so now what we have made is an automatic way to connect this to any terrain and i'll show you guys how to do that later in the video but with archimedes selected and your model selected find whatever face you want your road to come out of. Archimedes does break sometimes, so I did delete those grass parts for now because uh, it's not gonna let us render it since we had it selected before we clicked Archimedes or after. It's weird, sometimes it breaks, so we're gonna skip that for now. But if you make your model and include those grass parts, you could simply use another plugin called Part to Terrain later, and then you could just click grass and select all of those parts that you wanted to be grass, and it'll perfectly meet up with your road. We are gonna skip that for today since Archimedes is being a little bit buggy but we have plenty of settings we want to make sure that auto resize is on as well as fix neighbors and show overlap and then we have a few options here for inside middle and outside i would always recommend setting this to inside now pitch and yaw is simply if we want it to go uphill downhill or sideways let's go ahead and do a couple going uphill we don't need it to be like a whole ramp also, of course, when I go to record this video, things are a little buggy. When you click render, it brings in another one. But for some reason, you have to click Control Z to then connect those parts. It's not usually like this and it shouldn't be like that for you. But if it is, that's how you fix it. Rendering is just adding in another piece. And as you can see, it's doing it very weirdly. So if we press Control Z, it automatically connects all of that stuff together. We'll go ahead and render this, and then we could go ahead and grab all of these pieces and just stretch them out. This is what I was saying earlier, if you have a bit of a piece of road that you want straight, there's no point to make a bunch of renders for it because it's going to bring a lot more parts into your game and to overall kind of tank your performance. But as you can see, in just a couple of seconds, we were able to make a hill that's more like a ramp. You know, the more time you spend on it, the better it will turn out. That's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and start turning this road. Maybe we should have a little bit of a straight way too. Let's go ahead and turn our road now. We've made a bit more of a flat speed, a flat part. I will say Archimedes, when it's not buggy, will always update to the model you're selecting. So this new road that it will generate when we click render is supposed to be as long as this road, but for some reason, since I'm trying to record a video, it decided to bug out. Once again, it's usually not buggy like this, but we could go ahead and render. And then once again, we have to press Control Z to fix it. And as you can see, each time we render and press Control Z, 
it is making this turn in the road. You don't always have to press control Z, but if it's bugged like mine, you will have to. And then we could even start switching the sides. Let's say we want to turn the other way. We just flip axis right here. And there we go. As you can see, we're getting a very, very smooth road. The bigger your pieces are, the faster this will go. And the smaller they are, the more detailed it will be. Now, sometimes you're going to run into little things like this. I wouldn't be too concerned. If you're sort of a perfectionist in your build, you can go back through and fix all of these, but I wouldn't say it's the biggest problem to have. If we look at absolutely massive games on Roblox, like Jailbreak, for example, this is a game with 13,000 active players right now, and it's been popping for quite a few years now. Even they did not want to go back and fix every single road piece, which is completely understandable. When you're playing the game, you're going to roll right past this and not really notice it. There's a bit more noticeable parts in some parts of the map, but this is just to show you guys that it doesn't overly, overly matter. A couple clipping issues here and there. It's not a big problem when you have a massive game. Anyways, all in all, to make realistic roads on Roblox, you're going to want to start with your template piece, which looks something like this. If you want a one lane road, you can make it a one lane road, two lanes, three lanes. It doesn't matter how this piece looks. You can use literally anything. If you're doing a low poly game and say you wanted a path or a road that's a lot less detailed, just using one part is completely okay. If we make this like a, we'll go like that, I guess. We can open up Archimedes and do the exact same thing. Render, maybe we want it to cut a little bit harder. It's actually a lot easier, the less parts you're using. As you can see, things just work a lot better. But with this plugin and just taking your time and really laying out the map how you want it to be, you can make extremely realistic roads without too, too much effort. Now, I do want to give you guys one more tip before we hop into the questions of the day. If you have a repeated thing like an intersection, make sure to add your side props onto that before you start placing them all around. For example, when we were making the highway in the dream game, we added this light into our template before using Archimedes, so we automatically had a street light on every portion of the highway. This made it so we don't have to manually place those later. Or we could do stop signs. Road markings is another good one. Any repeated piece, just make sure you have it on your template so you're saving yourself a lot of time later on in your, uh, your game death life cycle. Anyways, let's jump into some questions. Question number one, when do you think is the best time of the year to release a game? I'd assume summer, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I genuinely don't think it matters unless it's a seasonal game. Of course, if you're making a winter game, releasing it in the summer probably isn't the best idea. And vice versa, if you're releasing a beach hangout, Releasing on Christmas probably wouldn't be the best idea. However, if it's like a simulator of some sort that's pretty broad and doesn't stick to like a seasonal time frame, I don't think it overly matters when you release it. I will say if Roblox is feeling dry, which right now it is, it's a great time to release. Players are kind of begging for something new and fun to play. And if you think you have that idea, I would get to work on it. Hopefully that answers your question. Let's see what's up next. Um, can you do rewards for people who stay in the test game for like 1 million seconds or something? I haven't thought about that, okay? Uh, there's not really playtime rewards in the test game as I'm not trying to make it a full on game. It was more so like, hey, you guys can see what kind of stuff we're working on on the motorcycles and be able to play it, have some fun, uh, maybe. But I will say I am trying to avoid making that into a full game and use most of my time and most of the scripters time to work on the actual dream game. So we'll see, but it's probably gonna be a no for me. Now guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you did enjoy and wanna see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, later.